welcome to Olympics for Life. My name is Adam Hanlon, um, and Alex and I produced a, a, a quite a lengthy episode about the um, wildlife talk for the year broadly, um, and we decided that we were going to split into two episodes. So, um, without any more further nonsense from me, this is part two of our episode about the 2020-2021 Wildlife Talk for the Year competition. One, one of the questions yeah. I'm going to ask you is about sort of what do you think the editorial process is for sort of inclusion in a book like that? How do they how do they manage to winnow down this vast numbers of, of amazing images they've got? It's an interesting uh, conundrum, yeah. I think. Well, I, I think partly it's probably relatively easy in that you just approach it by what must go in and okay. the iconic stuff must go in yeah. and you probably end up with 500 pictures and then, then it becomes hard <laughs> um, you know because there's, there's so many you know just that is just because I think the benefit of time it gives you that perspective when you look back down the years and go wow that picture yet yeah, still got it oh that picture we were all excited about at the time but maybe maybe yeah. loads of people have copied it now yeah. or maybe we now question the ethics behind it and there's certainly been you know winners in the competition we look back on and we go ethically maybe we're not so happy with that as maybe at the time the judges either didn't realize or now everyone's doing it people are like Ugh, you know so i think you know those things also maybe maybe shape the thing i think one thing that is i mean i'm really proud that i've got three pictures in there yeah um i think no no other underwater there's no one else I think Brian Scarry has got three underwater pictures in there as well, yep. um, but you know, pretty much everyone else has got one, one or two who's in there. So I'm really, really proud of, of that fact, and I'm really proud to be in that book. Um, actually, of my pictures, only one of those three was a category winner. You yeah. know, so I think there's an aspect of it that I quite like in that at the time you can be, oh, I thought that picture was really special. I'm surprised it didn't become a winner. And one of the nice things about something like this is maybe there's a little bit of a chance to go you know what all those years i've been moaning about this maybe i'm right maybe you know because you're, you're but well, actually i'm um in oh, many ways better to get in a book like this than any other ultimately i mean a, a, a judging decision in any competition is is the judges on the day choosing mm. a, to select an image um with with the benefit of hindsight and reflection you're always going to make a better a better call and i think that's inevitable really uh, or yeah. better, a different call maybe not better maybe a different call yeah um, and I think one thing that's really important to stress with this, though, which I think is a really important point, is that when they judge this book, they know the names. Yeah, it's true. It, you know, it's not like the, you know, when you judge it blind the first time. And obviously, when you see, you know, Art Wolf, when you see um, Jim Brandenburg's name, when you see Steve Nick, 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 you know, Nick Nichols, yeah. when, you know, name on the picture, which, oh, yes, I think we should have that one in. Yeah, yeah. Although, in fairness to them, they haven't promoted on the cover of the book buy this book and see all these amazing photographers pictures you know you could have a banner down here with a list of names which would i think increase its sales and they haven't done that you know you know they haven't said you know get this book and see paul nicklin's pictures and brown scary's pictures and, and whoever are the you know the photographers yeah. who are going to shift units for them yeah. they have you know it's it's it is in, in on merit a bit more subtle um, yeah it, it, it's it, it's really really interesting and it's it's an exciting time because I think, you know, it's we're only now, you know, a couple of weeks away from this year's winners coming out, yep. which is always, for me, a really exciting time of the year. And, and I say that as someone, I you know, I don't have any winners this year um, in the competition, but I'm still just as excited to see them. Yeah, I think that's probably worth um, sort of moving on, possibly from the mm. book slightly. The um, Wildlife Talk of the Year competition, one of the um, major events, I suppose, in, in the wildlife and nature photography calendar um mm. and thanks to COVID 19 obviously um it it continues its trail of disruption um and i certainly received an invitation um last week um to attend the award ceremony which is now being held virtually um yeah and alex obviously you've you've attended lots of the award ceremonies in person as opposed to virtually um, mm. um how do you feel about the idea of it being virtual this year well, I think first of all, it has to be virtual. Of course, yeah. There's no, yeah. There's no choice. Yeah. Um, and I think they'll do an amazing job because I have to say that they have got, you know, really good budget behind the competition. It generates a lot of in income for the museum, although that must be down this year because it's, you know, they the gallery that has the exhibition is running, yeah. runs a year yeah. and it costs a lot of money to go in and it's always rammed with people. 
Yeah. So they must make a lot of money from that and the exhibition tours and all that sort of thing. But obviously this year they've been closed for a lot of the year, so they must have lost a lot of income. However, I know they'll they'll spend the money to do something really special, and I think that that award ceremony would be really worth watching to see how you can do it. And I presume there'll be a lot of live interviews with all the winners. Um, I th and so I think you'll get that feeling. However, if I had won for the first time this year, well, in, I, I feel so sorry for anyone who's won for the first time this year. Yeah. Because going to that award ceremony at the Natural History Museum, putting on your fancy clothes, which obviously all the all the nature photographers are incredibly uncomfortable in, um, <laughs> but actually going in there and having this amazing evening, and it really is, you know, like you know a fairy tale ball. ball. You know, you're in this incredible, you know, used to be underneath the dinosaur, now it's it's underneath the big blue whale. You know, the whole room is just, just incredible. And there's also all your heroes in that room as well, and heroines. Um, and it's, it's just an incredible evening. You know, at that, that award ceremonies, I've met David Attenborough, uh, I've met, um, you know, members of the royal family. You know, it, it's properly big deal. Yeah. It's properly exciting. Red Plus carpet you stuff. Photographers you want to meet. And the networking possibilities of being in that room each year is really, really valuable. And I have to admit, I've greatly appreciated when I've been invited, even when I haven't been a winner, um, just because of being a, a good friend of the competition, being a successful photographer down the years, and being based in the UK, um, that you know I've really enjoyed going on the other occasions and still found just being there valuable to work. Yeah. You know, because they do invite major editors of, of major magazines. They do invite important moves and shakers. Yeah. And as a networking opportunity, everyone is having a really good evening celebrating the best of the best. Yeah. It's a really big part of it. And you go away feeling like you're in this special club. And you can, you know, the, the award ceremony, the, the annual portfolio comes out. It's got everyone's contact details in the back of the photographers. And you just feel that you can send any of those people an email and go, hey, we were both winners this year. You know, can you give me some advice? Can you help me with this? Do you know this person? And so, yes, you get that. You know, but you're not going to get it to the same degree as actually when you go there. Yeah. So I do feel sorry for people from that point of yeah. view. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, last year I went to, you know, Number Ten Downing Street, which is you know where where the prime, uh, to the Prime Minister's house and the centre of our government. You know, with David Dubois. I mean, that's a pretty cool thing as an <laughs> award. And it you know, is. that's obviously not going to happen this year. No. Um, and I think that you know we were you know drinking wine and chatting and you know and you know what an amazing opportunity. And those are the opportunities that the competition gives. And that side of it won't be possible this year. But I do think they'll work incredibly hard to give the photographers as much press and promotion as they can with, with, that, you know, with, with this loss of opportunity because of COVID. And certainly I think um, I'll be attending the ceremony virtually, obviously. Um, and um, one of the things that Alex and I plan to do is to produce Wet Pixel Live episode fairly closely after the results are announced. Um, in order to try and discuss the results and to chat through some of the some mm. of the things we see, some of the, possibly some of the techniques that have been used, some of the trends that are developing in um, from the competition. So, so that's something mm. we certainly do. So, so the, the the virtual ceremony is being held on the thirteenth. Um, obviously, uh, and because I didn't win, I can moan about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we can have a right bitching session. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, I think the key thing always when looking at results is to try and park your own results. Of course. And try and appreciate what's strong in the images that they've chosen. Yeah. If you just look at the winners and go, I don't like that, I don't like this, everyone's got that, blah, blah, blah. you don't learn anything for doing well in the future. Whereas if you look at the winners and go, why did they pick that? What's special about this shot? Try and find the positives. I think you'll do a better job of entering. And the chance to enter is coming up pretty soon. I mean, I think it's the 20th of October is yeah. when the competition opens. Yeah. And I would certainly encourage every underwater photographer to, to, to be part of this competition. Um, I know, you know, I know you can argue about results any one year or the other, and definitely because the competition isn't judged primarily by underwater photographers. You know, there are always going to be some strange choices. Mm. Um, thankfully, by the time something like this comes out, they have the chance to maybe filter out some of those strange choices. Yeah. Um, but um, th what this competition can do for you in terms of your career, your standing, the doors it opens for you, I think is well worth any of, of those foibles. And I think you should always try and be part of it because, you know, it attracts huge numbers of entries. The chances of winning 
even if you're, you know, the, the pictures that are entered, having been a judge, they're all good. Yeah. You know, it's 40, 50,000 really good photos every year. And, you know, it's very easy, even with amazing stuff that would deserve to win and deserve to become iconic over time, for the judges just to miss it that year. Because there are parts of the judging that if one judge goes against you and there's so many pictures to go for, an amazing picture could be knocked out. Yeah. And, you know, it just it's just the nature of the process. So you should always be in it because then you've got a chance. Yeah. To think, oh, I'm definitely going to win is a ridiculous statement, even when you've got good stuff. You know, you, you put your good stuff in and see how you do. If you think it's still good the next year, try it again or try some new stuff. But I think if you're not in it, you haven't got the chance to be one of these winners and have these these doors open. I think the one thing I would say, though, when choosing pictures to enter, you know, even though if you're trying to always be in it, is choose pictures that you are happy to see win. You know, the worst thing that can happen to you in the wildlife photographer, and I know it's happened to some photographers, is win with a picture that all your peers think is dodgy. <laughs> because yeah. it's going to become your, your most famous picture, and you, if, you, if, 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 if you, everyone around you thinks it's a bit average or a bit dodgy, um, it's gonna, that's gonna, reputation is gonna stick on you. So, you know, make sure you enter stuff that you would be proud for that picture to become incredibly well known, to be seen by everyone you've met in your life. Because when these pictures do win, they go in newspapers all around the world, they get seen by millions in exhibitions, mm. and they become incredibly well known. And they're still being put out in books, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40 years yep. after you took them. Yep. And, you know, bear that in mind when you're picking your entries. Don't just go, oh, this has got a chance to win because it's, you know, it, it's a bit cool, a bit, you know. So make sure you enter the pictures that you'd be proud to stand behind for, for decades. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what can happen if they do do well for you. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't make a mistake and enter the wrong images. There we go. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic, Alex. So just to, to recap, um, what, what, the book's shipping now, Alex? Is it available now? Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. I, mean, yeah I mean, literally, I think just now. Okay. It's a relatively expensive and heavy book. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't buy it from overseas if you're, you know, if it's not out in your country yet. I'd yeah. wait for it to be available because it's, it's going to have a big shipping cost if you try and ship it around the world. Yeah. The cover might vary around the world. I know the, the previous one, the 50 one, had a different color cover in the States to the, U, to the UK. Um, but this is the UK edition. Um, we'll, we'll they put, might well put, you know, this is uh, an American photographer's picture on the cover in the States, for example. We'll, I, I have no idea. But really worth seeking out. Just, you know, I just pulled out a few favourites and it's just, you just feel guilty doing it because the names and the, the, the iconic images you're passing over, not to show them quickly, are, are just too many. And it is a phenomenal book. And I've really, you know, it's, 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 I think if you've got the previous one, then it might be slightly harder to justify the expense of it um, and maybe wait, you know, for a year till it's a bit cheaper. But if you haven't got the previous one, I'd say it's an absolute must buy. We'll, and we'll get put, as much inspiration from land as, as underwater pictures. We'll, we'll put a link to it in the, uh, in the description, I think, to, 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 to where, well, at least the, um, the wildlife talk of the year where you can, and then people can access it from there. So thank you very much, Alex. Um, we'll say goodbye for now. Um, and um, I'd like to thank our sponsor this episode, which is Bunaken Oasis. Um, I'd like to thank you all for watching. And um, please feel free to like this if you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to add any comments or any ideas for future topics in the comment section. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you very much and goodbye.